from now. Hello and welcome to the latest in our series of Saturday Spotlight interviews. This is Anna Amelia from Northeast Animal Rights. Today we have Victoria Featherstone Pierce, who's a co-founder of Canine Angels and she's also a vegan writer. So thank you very much, Victoria, for, for joining us and welcome. Okay. Thank you for asking me. It's really nice. Nice of you. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. If you are okay, we'll go straight into the questions. So the first one is about your your vegetarian when yeah. you went vegetarian at the age of six, which is incredibly young for um, for you to make mm. such an important decision. So can you remember much about the time? Mm. I mean, obviously the reason the reason was it was chickens, um, but the conversations with your family around the chickens and and the other animals as well. Yeah, I, actually. I always say baby chicks, but actually it was ducklings. And I don't know where I got that from, but it was ducklings. <laughs> I had ducklings, but I called them chicks because yeah. I was at, you know, six years old. Yeah. Um, well, I was six years old and my dad brought home two baby ducklings. And um, they grew up in our garden and they were our pets and I love them. And um, we took very good care of them. And then I just didn't understand why my parents were eating meat. They actually had a, a pig's head in um in a pot and with the eye on looking up and I remember them looking at it talking about it and I, and I just said you know in a child's voice obviously but but we have we have chicks I said well, you know they're ducklings we have chicks in the garden but mommy why are we eating a pig and it literally went from there and um I've always been a really stubborn person and known exactly what I want and where I'm going and what I'm doing and I just from there from then on um, in the 70s very early 70s said that's it I'm I'm not eating meat anymore I didn't know that that had a name it was called vegetarian mm -hmm. I just said I'm not eating meat anymore and you know my mom wasn't clued up on anything about being a vegetarian it, it wasn't you know it wasn't a normal usual thing for a child in the 70s to to, to go seven to go uh, vegetarian um so really nobody knew what to do and i think you know we didn't have the internet then so my mum was just feeding me spinach and giving me lucas aid um which i think has worked so and i did i stayed vegetarian up until 16 years ago um um you know and i, I learned more along the way and i understood it more along the way but i didn't really sort of delve into the other side of veganism until 16 years ago until uh, Juliet Galatly, um, the Viva founder, did a talk on the dark side of dairy. And then again, it was like a light switch moment. And I was kind of angry with myself that I didn't look into that side. I didn't look into the, the dairy side. I didn't look into the vegan side. Um, had that sort of, you know, been in the forefront and the limelight, like it, like it is now, I mean, it's, it's everywhere, um, I would have probably gone vegan sooner. So I think we really have to sort of thank people like Juliet Galatly and then everybody yeah. out there that just gets the message out there about veganism. Because I think there is a, a light bulb moment and, I, and it's happening for so many people now. Um, and I just wish for me it happened sooner because, well, I can't think of anything more terrible than consuming um, something mm -hmm. that's from an animal and that, that hurts an animal. So, um, you know, the information just wasn't wasn't there back then. Yeah, I think um, it's you've, it's very similar to what kind of I went through. I mean, you kind of as a vegetarian, you think you're not contributing directly to the death of an animal. It's almost like a delayed process. And then obviously you see the footage and you realise that you are. And everybody says the same thing. They wish they had done mm. it sooner. You know, I think I don't think people yeah, realise how easy absolutely. it is. Yeah, yeah. So fast fast forward to well, your there is a there is a sign and saying out there. Sorry, there is a sign and saying out there saying um, every vegan before they went vegan um, was saying they wouldn't go vegan or something. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. I would have gone vegan sooner <laughs> had I known yeah. all the facts. And that's why it's so important mm -hmm. that we keep talking about it because it mm -hmm. just takes that conversation yeah. and that one person to spark something in you. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I do think there's a really good way of doing it as well I, I don't think you should be shoving it in people's faces and being angry about it because I don't think that works mm -hmm. as angry as I can feel and, and get um I don't think it works being that I've been that angry person and, and it, it didn't work mm -hmm. and it certainly didn't help me either I was sick all the time so um 
I just think we have to do it in a, in a nice way like we are doing now. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, that's part of the, the group how we, we we kind of like approach um, animal rights as well, because people do think veganism and animal rights is extreme. So we are much more about the educational approach, not about the shouting sort of in people's faces and preaching. Mm. I think it's about normalising veganism as much as we yeah. can. You know, it's when you say an opportunity to talk about it, you talk about it and you're passionate about it and you're positive about it. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, I think that's a really, really yeah. good way of doing it. Yeah, a absolutely. Yeah. So if we, uh, if we fast forward to your modeling career, uh, I know you've had a you've had a highly successful modeling career. How easy was it to be vegetarian at that time, particularly in an industry where you know it's well known for issues around eating and body shape? Hmm, I'm not sure if my diet was a real problem in the with the mod, within the modeling industry. I think oh god, my dog's being sick. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do you want to pause it? Pause. <laughs> Okay, right. <laughs> back on now. <laughs> right. So you're talking about being vegetarian in, in, in the modeling, modeling industry. Yeah, I'm not sure that was really mm. something that was a problem or an issue or mm. a topic so much. I think models tend to, especially back when I was modeling, um, really didn't eat and, and did other things, mm. um, narcotics and what have you to to stop themselves from eating so I don't think diet was too much of a something that we mm. really spoke about um mm -hmm. so it, I'm not sure if it really affected yeah the, my career in any way okay. um so you, you've had a, a varied and a highly successful career in acting and modeling appearances and pop videos you've done absolutely all sorts so what is your favorite kind of work and what do you get most satisfaction out of is there a particular film or project you've been especially proud of yeah well there's some things I'm not proud of <laughs> and um, there are some things I'm immensely proud of. And I think I, I had an interest in modeling career because I wanted to be a fashion model in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And I was told no, that I wasn't good enough. Um, and I was very stick thin at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so I, I got into the glamour modeling. Mm -hmm. um, some of it, I, I do honestly wish I hadn't have done, mm -hmm. um, but it was very interesting because I then started getting into TV commercials and it's really quite unusual for somebody that's done glamour modeling like page three and mm. penthouse magazine and things like that mm. to then go on and do um tv commercials in the mainstream mm. and i was i was getting tv commercials all of the time and um so i think my favorite tv commercial would have to be the guinness tv commercial it's in black and white mm. and i get married to a really 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 old man Mm -hmm. I'm heavily pregnant mm -hmm. um, and they're basically saying that if you drink Guinness and you're in your 90s, you can pull this young blonde and get her pregnant. So they're saying <laughs> that Guinness gives you strength. <laughs> Actually, Guinness wasn't vegan then, but it is now. Yeah, so I'm really yeah. pleased mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was one of my favourites. Also, um, I think one of my most well memorable things that I've ever done was work with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Mm -hmm. I actually had a speaking part in Eyes Wide Shut mm -hmm. and I went for the original casting as um, as one of the, the naked girls in the movie that was wearing masks and I ended up getting a speaking part and I was just over the moon and I thought this was going to be my chance to be an actress and uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, and really do well in that field mm -hmm. um, and I worked with Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman and Harvey Cartel and it was just the four of us in the scene and I had a speaking part and I, it, it, the moment I walked into the, the house where we were shooting, Tom Cruise was walking out and he went, I know your face from somewhere. And I went, funny that, I know your face from somewhere too. <laughs> and, and I realized he actually saw my casting tape. Um, and it was just surreal, Tom Cruise saying that to me. Um, and I think that was probably one of the most scariest two days of filming that I've ever done, mm -hmm. but also the, the most, memorable and exciting things I'd ever done. Now, what happened was afterwards, um, my scene along with all Harvey Cartel scenes was cut from the movie because he decided he didn't want to do the movie anymore and they brought in um, Sidney Pollock. Um, but I will never forget those two days working with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman mm. and the fun that we had and the laughter and mm. the comments and nice things they said to me. Um, it was just, it was just very, very surreal. Um, if I could go back and do it again, I would. I really would. Um, 
But I think in terms of doing jobs that haven't paid me well, because those, or haven't paid me at all rather, it, I mean, it has to be all the work that I've done with PETA and the animal, animal rights things. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There will always be mm -hmm. everything to me. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. so, so how did Canine Angels come about? Yeah, that's where we've been nearly going now for 10 years, Canine Angels. Um, mm -hmm. And it literally just happened that one night uh, on Facebook, myself and two friends were, we were just on Facebook. We saw a lady put a plea out wanting help with a little dog in Romania. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously you see sort of things like that all the time on Facebook, don't you, to help dogs. Yeah. Um, and some, you know, most of the time they're, they're real rescuers. Sometimes they're not. Uh, we decided to help this one little dog and um, I sent, I think, 40 euros to help the little dog. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, if it's not a real rescuer, then I'm, I've lost 40 euros. If it is, then fantastic. Anyway, she ended up getting little Angel. We called her Angel. Um, she was in a forest. She ended up going to get Angel from the forest. And myself and my two friends, Pola and Annika, the other two founders, were, we were just so elated that we could help one little dog. We said, well, with all our contacts and people that we know, um, why don't we start a charity? Um, and it really went from there. Uh, and it's a journey that's, um, well, it's been the most fulfilling, frustrating, mm. saddest, happiest, mm. most amazing mm. thing that's ever happened in, in my life is, is mm. starting Canine Angels. I, I wouldn't, you know, regret it for all the terrible times and the, and the mm. bad things that I've seen. I would would never mm. ever say that I wouldn't have started it. Um, yeah, I just I wish Canine mm. Angels would go on forever and ever and ever. So how do you? It, just, it, it went from there. So now we've we've, we've rehomed near to a thousand dogs. Mm. We've sterilised two thousand dogs. Mm. We've raised close to uh, half a million pounds. Mm. Um, and we regularly, very regularly, send food parcels and medical parcels out to Romania. Mm -hmm. And we saved quite a few dogs from the Thai dog meat trade. Um, mm -hmm. We do things in Parliament. We're just out there all the time. I mean, it's, yeah. it's yeah, it's, it's completely taken over my life, actually. And yeah. I'm very pleased it has. <laughs> Yeah. So you were talking about, obviously, you've seen some horrendous things. So, so how do you cope with them? Um, how do you manage your own well-being? And, you know, things like you see some horrible things out there, but you have to, you can't bring all the dogs home. So how do you cope with all of that? Yeah. I think in the beginning, you obviously, it's all in the heart and it, it, it is, it's horrendous. I mean, it is absolutely horrendous. Some of the things that I've seen, some of the, the things, um, the way some humans act towards animals. Um, I think you just have to have a word with yourself and say, if you carry on the way that you're car carrying on now, you are going to be a broken person and you're not going to help anyone. You're not going to help yourself. You're not going to help the animals. And you just have to lead with your head and not with your heart. And I know that's easier said than done, um, but it's something you have to do, I guess, um, to survive. Of course, I still have moments of utter, I want to cry, but I think I have definitely got to a point now where I can look at pictures or I can be in a situation and, and I can do it and just mm. think with my head and not with my heart so much. I mean, obviously the heart's there, um, but I think you just have to put your big girl's blouse or whatever it's called on and just say, the animals need me and... Um, you know, I'm not going to help them by being someone that's going to be crying all the time um, and in an absolute state. So I think I just put up this sort of imaginary blind or wall, if you like, just as a coping mechanism. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I do as well is a couple of other members of NIA, uh, we volunteer for a rescue called Pause for Thought. Um, and... You know, one of the, you know, we find it very frustrating because we see it, the the uh, they don't. It's more like cats and rabbits and guinea pigs, birds. Um, I mean, absolutely loads. Of, you know, all, all the time. And you go in there, and it's the same sort of thing. You go in there, and they're absolutely lo lovely animals, and you're coming away, and you know you can't help them all. Um, but you see, sort of like you know, people who you think are intelligent and compassionate, and they're buying dogs and cats from breeders. 
um, mm. even though they're new and they're telling mm. you about it, even though that they, they know what, you, what your views are and your contacts. So what do you say to people who, you know, who, who say they want a particular breed or that rescue dogs have issues, mm. so they'd rather buy a breed rather than a rescue dog? Again, with the with the veganism, I in the beginning used to get very angry <laughs> and shout at people, but now I just, you know, I just talk to people. I mean, of course, behind their back, I'm going bloody, 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 bloody idiots, or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, I just try and show them with my dogs, with my seven. I mean, I have seven beautiful, beautiful dogs. I have one. Uh, Pomeranian here I mean he would go for four thousand yeah. pounds um that's not why I took it <laughs> don't yeah. look at me like that um <laughs> I, I just I think every single breed you can now uh adopt mm. every single breed um I understand people want puppies but there are also puppies out there that that needs um mm. that need adopting <laughs> it's hard because you as I said you, you do want to have a shout at people but I think it's it's just best to show them your family mm. and my family they're all gorgeous yes there are issues mm. I actually take dogs with issues I mean mm. little I didn't know little um hero was a was a barker but he is um <laughs> I had one that was given away because he he bites for food at dinner time mm. um you know they all have their little issues but humans do right we're not just going to chuck everybody out because they've got issues I and mean, we work with them and hopefully we can resolve them um i think we've all got issues yeah. <laughs> somewhere yeah. down the line um i just try and let people show them the way really um mm. and my facebook and everything that i do my instagram is all showing animals and veganism in a really positive way and i think that's the best way to do it i think if if we get angry, and of course I am angry, and I do have a little moan at times, um, but we just have to show the world that you can, there are other ways. Um, I think people are, are waking up, but I also think there are some people, it doesn't matter what you say, what you show them, they will always buy a dog. There's nothing you can do about that. And there will always be people out there that will always eat meat. There's probably nothing we can do about that. So... I, I do think we're going to win this this fight. I do think the world is going to go vegan. I think it's going to be 90% vegan and 10% meat eaters. Mm -hmm. Probably the same with, with people adopting animals. It's going to be more adopting and just a few buying. Mm -hmm. And I think that will probably be because the price of puppies will be put up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll be the money side that will deter them rather than, mm -hmm. uh, you know, understanding more about rescue mm -hmm. animals. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think we will win this in the end. I really do. Good, good. So what's next for uh, for you and for Canine Angels? And more of the same. I mean, I just I'm I'm quite, I've I've got any honest at the moment. I'm trying to deal with called sleep apnea, and um, mm. it's really slowing me down. It's it's mm. it's. I'm just I just want to get out there and I just want to do things. I want to work all the time, but this illness is really really slowing me down. So once I get my mojo back and I get my apnea sorted, um, I just want more for the charity. I want to keep doing what we're doing. Just keep spreading the awareness, keep raising the funds, keep helping the dogs mm -hmm. and just doing more of the same with the, the vegan, um, you know, just showing positivity in the vegan world and getting that out there. Mm -hmm. And I do think that side has definitely become easier now because veganism is more, definitely more mainstream. Mm -hmm. um, I think we were kind of, you know, seen as being a little bit strange before. I don't think we are anymore. Yeah. Um, so just more of the same. Just, just mm. keep, just keep going. Yeah, I think um, you're right. It's we we see that we are trying to normalise it now because we we have it mainstream. It's about normalising it and making and kind of not having those sort of embarrassed conversations about being vegan. Um, but I think you're right. I think we will win. I think we will win. You know, just because it's it's a, it's the right thing to do. Um, how long it'll take is another thing, but, yeah. uh, but I think we will, we will win. Um, but the, when we're talking about the the, uh, the dogs and the breed and everything, what frustrates me is, um, you know, we kind of hearing people say that they've got puppies and kittens and you think, why have you got kittens and puppies? Mm. There shouldn't mm. be any being born. Mm. You shouldn't, you know, it's mm. just... No, I, I, absolutely. I think the thing that really makes me angry more than anything is where they're being sold. 
you know, and they're being sold on these silly forums online. And I just, that makes me angry. And I, and I, I get angry actually that animals are being sold. You know, they're, they're, they're yeah. commodities and they're making yeah. money for somebody. And that makes me very angry. Um, that also makes me angry within the, the, the vegan world, as, um, the, the meat yeah. world as well. Yeah. Um, not only is it cruel what they're doing to the animals, but they're selling them and making yeah. money from it. And I just think people are like so passionate about farmers and, you know, yeah. how a farmer's going to go on and, and have businesses. They'll find a way. You know, they already get subsidies yes. from, from yeah. the government. They yeah. will find a way. There yeah. are other ways. We're yeah. going to need more vegetables. We're going to need more grains. Yeah. There yeah. are other ways. You, you find a way, don't you, in the yeah, world? Of course. You know, not everything is, is set out how you think it's going to be. You just you find another route. Yeah, you do. Don't get me started on dairy bailouts. <laughs> that's, another, that's another rant of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, well, that's I, all our, that, that's all our questions. I can't bear it for many reasons. That, that's all of our questions for oh, today. Lovely. That so, was fast. So, uh, so thank you very much for giving up your time. I um, really, really do appreciate it. I know, obviously, it's like a 24-7 job for you, so I do appreciate you giving up your time. Um, so we'd like to say from everybody at NIA, thank you very much, and uh, and good luck with everything you do with Canine Angels. Oh, it's lovely to talk to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. You very Have much. a good day. You take care. Right, you as well, and thanks. Bye-bye.